This year's NPT review conference has been postponed until early 2021. We don't know what the world's going to look like by then, but I think one thing we can be pretty sure about is it will not be back to normal. In fact, in our view, we have to fight to stop it getting back to normal because normal really is the problem. Because normal is a series of interlocking crises, climate, environment, economic. In fact, the pandemic is at least in part created by these other crises. Some people call it uh, problems of late capitalism, how the economic development, how unbridled economic development has caused a catastrophe for the natural environment. We also see an increased danger of conflict and war. And this will of course be exacerbated by the increasing economic crisis as a result of the virus. So it's impossible to separate out these problems and crises. They're all part of a whole. And we believe very strongly here in CND that we have to address them as part of a whole. We need to see all of this in the wider framework. Our focus is on fighting and abolishing nuclear weapons, but that is really part of a whole. One of the things we've had a lot of discussion about is the impact of decades of neoliberal economic policies uh, on the situation we see now. And we see that the inability of many states here in Europe in particular to deal effectively with the pandemic is the result of decades of neoliberal economic policies and in particular the last 10 years of extreme austerity following the financial crash of 2008. So what it means for us here in the UK, our NHS has been left unfit for purpose, it's been stripped of resources and this of course has um, led to a lot of debate here in Britain about um, the security priorities of our government because we know that uh, in our national security strategy and the risk assessment pandemic threat has been a tier one threat uh, for at least a decade whereas nuclear weapons have been dropped down to a tier two threat yet all the money is going on things like nuclear weapons military and so on and uh, the national health service which is what deals with problems like the pandemic, it's been stripped of resources. Uh, but we've also seen how the ideological framework of neoliberalism has made some governments incapable of dealing with the virus in the interests of the people as a whole. So for example, here in Britain, our government in the early stages and well after they should have had a change, they were resistant to planning, to nationalisation of resources where necessary, to the necessary regulations and the lockdown and so on. That has left untold thousands of dead necessarily. And uh, we were blighted, and we still are blighted, in fact, by the herd immunity approach of our government, which many people have said that it's eugenicist, effectively a Darwinian cull <clears throat> of older and more vulnerable sections of the population. Um, of course, the experience of the lockdown has brought two very positive factors to the fore. One is social solidarity and it's amazing, we've, we've seen it everywhere, so I don't need to talk about that in detail. But, and then linked to that, the other uh, positive factor is the understanding of whose labour really counts, whose jobs are valuable. It's the care workers, the health workers, delivery drivers, cleaners. It's not hedge fund managers and advertising executives and so on. They have nothing to add, nothing to, to bring um, to this situation. So uh, we want to see a, a, a new, uh, a, a revaluing of, of the work of these people. So they're, they're amongst the lowest paid people in our society, but they are the most essential. So building that revaluing of, of the, this kind of labour uh, into the new society um, as we go forward is absolutely crucial. And there's a, there's a popular slogan here, elsewhere I'm sure as well, which is no going back, you know, no going back to how things have been in so many ways. And, and that's the position of CND too. It's absolutely essential that the lessons of this crisis are learned. And we think that there will be 
a small window of opportunity to bring about positive change. Um, you know, after a while, there'll be kind of inertia and people will think it's difficult and all that sort of thing. But for a while, people will be very motivated to bring about change. So in that time, we have to frame a new narrative while people's minds are open as a result of the crisis. And the balance in society has to be recalibrated towards the interests of the people as a whole. So, for example, in terms of spending priorities, we want money spent on health and social welfare, not warfare. Things like housing, for example. Um, so all the homeless people um, have been taken off the streets and found housing. So do we want to have them put back on the streets? No. We have to have um, a reassessment of housing needs and uh, homes for people and how that can be uh, properly dealt with in, in a human fashion in the interests of the people. And of course, we also need a new understanding of what security is as well. Common security, human security. Security is not about having the capacity to uh, destroy people with weapons of mass destruction. It's um, giving them food security, it's giving them health security. Those are the things which really count. And one of the very interesting developments for us here, as elsewhere, I'm sure, has been uh, the question of arms conversion. So, in the twinkling of an eye, the government has actually facilitated arms conversion after decades of saying no we can't do that you know cnd has a utopian fantasy that you know that can happen well it has happened and we need to ensure that that change of production from weapons to socially essential and uh, vital equipment that has to be taken forward so i think that how things unfold over the next few years uh, very much depends on what we can achieve in the next few months. And that has to be also uh, wider issues like ensuring um, that the limits on personal freedom, the necessary limits, um, are not retained longer than necessary. And I'm not really talking about um, the lockdown, because I think that's, that is necessary, but any kind of restrictions on uh, meetings and, and those kinds of things, that needs to be rolled back um, and our uh, proper political and freedom of speech rights, they have to be restored. So, um, Obviously, this is going to affect our work. We very much uh, believe that broader alliances, civil society alliances for change are absolutely vital. CND always works in alliances with others. Um, we see nuclear weapons as very much part of the whole political framework. We need to work together. But now we're part of the Build Back Better campaign with many other social movements and campaigns building a mass movement for a different society. We're always stronger together. And on that, international is key. We believe, as I'm sure we all do, there is no national solution to this problem. So we have to strengthen our international coordination as a movement, for peace movement. And we also have to press for states to see it in that way as well. Um, the states on their own can't deal with the pandemic. There has to be global cooperation in the same way as there does has to be on dealing with climate change, on respect for international treaties, on working together for a nuclear weapons free world, supporting the UN treaty on the prohibition for nuclear weapons of nuclear weapons, for example. So that sense of global cooperation, we have to work together. And of course, it will affect how we work um, for a while in terms of practicalities, online meetings and events. They are going to be the way forward, certainly for some while. So we have to make the most of those new opportunities and really build together. And united, we will be able to bring about a better and more peaceful world. Thank you very much.